my heart there is a fire, Lord, down in us. It's a burning desire, it is for you I want to know. But it's you we want to see, come walk and talk with me. Cause you are welcome here. Let's welcome this morning. You're welcome here. You are welcome here, mighty God. Oh, we welcome you, Lord. Come on, give him praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
your hands all over this house this morning. Heavenly Father, it's our prayer this morning. God, we just want to be where you're at this morning. Lord, I don't care where it takes me. I don't care where it leads me. I want my life, my family, I want it to be where you're at today, God. Many of you know my story of how I was adopted. My parents are still pastors to this day. They couldn't have kids. They tried for about six or seven years. Prayed that God would give them a baby. And so one day they were pastoring in Paducah, Texas. They had just taken a church to go to Denver, Colorado. And it was first, first week in December. And it was the last day for my mother teaching Head Start and this is of course back before cell phones and all that good stuff they called her at the school and said Mrs. Harris if you still want a baby we have one for you and so immediately they dropped everything drove to Wichita Falls picked up the most beautiful little boy you've ever seen in your life of course it was all downhill after that but at that moment I was gorgeous so they adopted me of course I was adopted in to the Harris family and then two years later two and a half years later my mom got pregnant had my sister all growing up my whole life when people would find out I was adopted they didn't believe it because I looked and act acted just like my parents my dad they would be around us and they would say, there's no way that, there's no way he's adopted. There, that how in the world could it be that close? It doesn't make sense. Now, now, we all understand this morning that God has a hand in that and God can do that. But there's also something too, when you're raised in an environment, we're a product of our environment a lot of times. I took on a lot of the same traits and personality traits that my father had and my mother because I lived in the same home with them. I was close to them didn't matter that genetically I didn't have anything in common with them but because I was raised by them and I was close to them I react and even to this day I do things and Kara's like you're, you're turning into your dad you sound like your dad you, you, you're doing the same things you've griped about even Josh this week I had a key in my ear and was digging my ear out and he was like you turned into your dad I said, I know. I said, all the technology that we have today, a key is still the best thing you can use. <laughs> How many would agree with that? We've got all this other. A key is perfect. We're singing this song. I, I just want to be closer to you. I want to be where you're at. What is the importance of that? The importance of being in church and being around other believers is if you take on those same traits so, Pastor, I, I haven't been raised in church. I wasn't blessed like you are to have a family that's, that's still in church and, and, and have that experience. It doesn't matter. Because we've all been adopted into the family of God. Every single one of us. You've been adopted into the family of God. Not one person was born into the kingdom. You were adopted into the kingdom of God. All of us. And when you're adopted, we become heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And when you're adopted into the family, even though it didn't originally start out that way, the longer you spend time in the kingdom of God, in the family of God, you begin to take on 
his tendencies and his traits and his personality. His will becomes your will. The things of God all of a sudden becomes your prayer and your heart. And you start praying for others. And when you walk in and you see people crying and hurting instead of, you know, pointing and laughing and maybe having the mindset of, well, it's about time. They, they deserve that. Look at them. They live that lifestyle. What do they expect? Instead of that mindset, all of a sudden it starts to burden your heart. And there's a part of you that stops and says, you know what, Lord, bless them. God, they don't understand right now, but God, they can if they'd ever have a chance to receive you. Lord, use me. And you begin to intercede for them. How many know what I'm talking about this morning? Because you know what it's like to be outside of the family. Where it doesn't make sense. They're not going to like me there. I don't go to church there. They look at me funny. They're going to tell me how to live my life. Listen, for too long the church has done that. The church has to be an emergency room. That regardless of what's going on and what's taking place, what you look like or what condition your life is in, the church has to be the one place where people feel welcome to walk through those doors and receive love without any strings attached. It has to be that way. Because it was that way for you. Look around this morning. We don't have a seat. It's that way for you. That's why you're here this morning. You want to be where God is at. You, you want, and the more we're around God, the more we're around church, the more we're faithful, the more we begin to act like Him. Amen? I'm so thankful for that. Whoo, good looking crowd this morning. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, bless Him this morning. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you this morning. You may be seated. I would have you greet one another, but I don't think that'd be a good idea. I know some of you are saved, but you're not sanctified, all right? And you would steal somebody's seat. Amen. Amen. I know Rafer would. Where's he at? Rafer would do it in a heartbeat. There he is right there. See, I'm telling the truth. I wouldn't lie in church. God bless you for being here this morning. We've got a different format to our service today. We have... Uh, I think over 25 people getting baptized in water this morning. Amen. I, I, I want us to practice something real quick. When, when someone gets baptized this morning, when they take the plunge, and I've already had a few bribes to hold a few of them under a little longer. And so it, when someone is baptized, I, I want you to do something for me. We're going to practice this real quick. I want you to cheer like you're at, it's your favorite ball team, whatever it is, but I want us to be excited about it, all right? Can we do that? So we're going to practice on the count of three. I want you to cheer. This is what we're going to do. Every time someone comes up out of that water, we're going to cheer for a brand new life, a brand new start, a new creation in God. Amen? Can we do that? One, two, three. I like it. I like it. Now, I need you to do that when I preach, okay? Not when I'm done, all right? I know I see some of you already. He's done. Woo! Yes, finally. Amen. Going to be a great day. After following the service today, we have uh, spaghetti and garlic bread and salad and cookies and sweet tea, and we have all this prepared. We want to invite you to come and have a meal with us. We're going to be sharing uh, just some future plans of the fellowship, uh, ministry opportunities, leadership opportunities. We need everyone there. If you want to get plugged in, if you want to find out what's going on in the church and, and different things we have going, we're going to be sharing different department heads will just be sharing what God is doing in their ministry. And so it'll give you a chance to connect with us, give you a chance to sign up and really get involved. You know, the great thing about the church growing and and as exciting as it is to maybe have a bigger sanctuary and a bigger facility, we have more people. The, the money is not the issue. The important thing is, is we need people volunteering. We need people helping. And, and if it's once a month, twice a month, once every three months, we need you connected, connecting to people. Because preachers don't build churches. People build churches. People build churches. We can have the greatest staff. We can have the greatest ministries going on. But if people don't get excited about God and invite their friends and their family, then it doesn't mean anything. Amen? So I need you today, if you can, to share a meal with us at following the service. 
I promise you, you'll be blessed. Uh, Miss Angie is, is cooking that. Angie Mayfield, uh, I roped her into doing that this week, and so she's going to do that. And I see Joe is in here. She's already kicked him out of the kitchen, all right? So she is taking care of that. It's going to be a great day, so thank you for being here today. I see a lot of new faces. I know you're here to watch uh, your, your family get baptized, and I just want to say thank you for being with us and fellowshipping with us today and worshiping with us today. Uh, my name is Justin. I am the pastor here at Lighthouse. And uh, so anything that you don't like, anything you disagree of, you can blame that on me, okay? But everything that you love and everything that you enjoy, that is all my wife and all my staff, okay? They make that happen. And so I'm blessed to have great people around me. And uh, I'm blessed to have a beautiful church and a wonderful congregation. This Lighthouse Assembly has some of the best people I've ever been around in my whole life. Amen. And if you don't believe that, just get to know some of them, okay? I know some of you are looking around going, Pastor, I do know them, and you don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say they were perfect. I'm saying they, we got a lot of grace operating right now in this room. All right? God is, God is working in all of us. And so thank you for being with us today. I want to ask our ushers to come this morning. If you've come prepared to give, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. On your bulletin there, on the bottom of that, there's a place where we can connect with you. If you would fill your information out there and give us a chance to do that, we would love to have the opportunity uh, to maybe meet any need. If there's any praise report, any prayer report that you have, if you'll put that on there, place this in the offering, uh, that would be a great opportunity for us to, to minister to you. Also, if you are a first-time guest with us today, we have a gift for you in the foyer. If you'll just bring, come out there. We'd love to bless you with just some information about our church and a nice little coffee mug and uh, just whatever we can do to partner with you on this journey of seeing God do something incredible. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you for this opportunity to invest in your kingdom. God, I thank you for your love and your mercy, God, that you've shown on my life and my family. And God, I thank you for what you're doing in this fellowship through so many different people. But God, we ask you today, Lord, to bless this offering. Use it, Lord, to further the kingdom. Jesus, we ask these things in your holy, precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you today as you give. Somebody say amen this morning. Listen, before we move any further this morning, Shandy, or Shandy, you're, Shandy, will you please stand? You and your husband stand. I hate to embarrass you, but it's for a good cause, I promise. We've been praying. We've been praying for Shandy for the last month, two months. She needs a miracle this morning. There's no other way to put it. She needs a miracle. And so I, I want to ask you to stand with me this morning. And I need some people just to gather around them real quick and just, just lay hands on them. And we'll just stretch your hands towards them. Would you do that? And will you all pray with me this morning? Heavenly Father, we love you. God, you're my healer this morning. Lord, the blood that was shed on Calvary wasn't just for my sin but for my healing. And Heavenly Father, Shandy needs a miracle today. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we command every ounce of cancer to leave her body Lord, we've done, we, we need you to do what no doctor can do, what no medicine can do, God. Right now, we claim victory in her body. 
In the name of Jesus, we ask her body to line up with the word of God from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Let your healing power begin to flow through her body. Every tumor, every ounce of cancer, we command it to leave right now. Lord, we ask you to bless this family, bless this marriage, God. Let them feel your presence right now, God. We're claiming a miracle right now. Lord, your word says we have not because we ask not. Well, this morning, collectively, together, we're asking you for a miracle today, God. We're asking you to give a miracle in her body, completely restore her the way she was made according to your will today, God. We ask it to be done, Jesus, in your holy, precious name. If you agree with that this morning, say amen. Amen. Let's thank God for his miracle right now. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen, amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for doing that with me today. Continue to keep them in prayer, and uh, we are honored to have you guys with us today. So God bless you for being with us. Amen. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Man, listen, we're continuing this week part two of my story. Now, we talked about last week how we all have a story, and, and many of us, we start telling our story if someone says, hey, how did you get to Bowie, or, or where are you from? We all have kind of a place where we start, all right? We, we have the places we skip over. We have the chapters where we just assume they never happen, and we tell the story that we're most comfortable with telling. We definitely tell the story that we're not embarrassed of, but how many would agree this morning, we're all in agreement, that we have pages and some of us a chapter or two and some of us many chapters of our life that sometimes we just like to skip over. We, we don't tell that story. And so we, we talked about last Sunday morning about starting a new chapter in our life and that in telling our story, we know that the word says that you and I are made overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony, which is this, you just telling your story. It's what God has done in your life. It's one beggar telling another beggar where the bread is. Okay. It's just you sharing. Listen, this is what God did in my life. I don't know if he's going to do it the same way, but everything changed when I accepted Christ. And from that moment on, My life was different, and so it's just you telling your story, and more importantly, not just telling when you accepted Christ and you started, but where you're at on that journey, amen? Sometimes we, we're excited and we can tell the story where everything started and it was exciting and things were popping and everything, it just felt like God was with us every single day. But then weeks and months and years passed by and then we find ourselves in the middle of our story and we're like, you know what, I love God and I'm thankful for what God did for me, but I just don't feel him right now. I don't feel like he's right there with me. We talked about this Wednesday night when Jesus went away to pray, and he took his disciples with him before he was arrested, and and the disciples fell asleep. And the scripture says that Jesus withdrew from them about a stone throws away and began to pray. And when he got back for them, the disciples were asleep. And there are times in our life where we have felt that God has withdrawn from us a little bit. Amen? Those times where he hasn't left us, but he has walked just a few steps away and has left us there with a command to pray or to do our ministry. And it's easy for us to get frustrated because we want to feel the goosebumps all the time. Amen. We want to feel excited. We want to feel the energy. We want to feel saved and sanctified, bulletproof. And we we just want to feel just up all the time. But I mean, you know, that's not reality. Amen. It's not reality. Some of you live that way. And I got news for you. You're not living in this same world. I get worried when people, you know, you talk to them like, oh, man, no, everything's great. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm the head and not the tail. Man, God is, he's my redeemer. He's my best friend. Wow, I'm so thankful to be alive and saved. And Man, where are you living at? What are you taking? What are you on? What's going on? I mean, it's, and it's just always up here. Listen, Scripture talks about in everything, doing moderation. There has to be a balance there. Okay, because we all know that what goes up eventually comes down. And the sad part is, is I talk to some of those people, and then six months, a year later, they can't hardly raise their head. Listen, God wants us to be faithful more than anything. And we talked about last week, the beginning of telling a new story is found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. 
looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the beginning, and He is the end. Scripture says that He that has begun a good work in you is faithful to bring it to completion. Which means the same God that saved you, the same God that found you in your sin and in your dark place and in your addiction and in your habits is the same God that can complete you through the process. He's the same God. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And we talked about Daniel set up disciplines in his life. And to tell a story that we were willing to tell, there are certain things we have to start in our life, certain disciplines that we need to begin in our lives so that we can find favor in God's eyes. So God can bless us. And the scripture says that Daniel prayed, even after he heard that the law had been made, that no one wants to pray to anyone except for the king. Scripture says in chapter 6, verse 10, that he continued to pray as he did before. He opened his windows toward Jerusalem and he prayed three times a day. He had been doing, that's a discipline he had set in his life long before that day. Weeks, months, even years that he had decided, I'm going to pray. Regardless of what happens, regardless of what my bank account says, regardless of who the president is, regardless of who the pastor is, regardless of what's taking place, regardless of how I feel, I'm going to pray and give thanks to my God. And because he did that, God showed favor and God blessed him. God put him in charge over many, gave him favor among his peers and rulers over him, but also gave him favor when he was thrown into the pit with the lions. Somebody say amen. It's one thing to have favor with your friends. It's another thing, it's another thing to have favor with a lion. Everybody agree with that? Yeah, that's a whole different thing. I've heard someone, you know, complain, well, the Scripture never says that the, the devil is a lion. It just says he goes, he roars her out like a lion, seeking who he may devour. I don't know about you, but I don't care to be eaten by a lion or anything that is like a lion, all right? Even if it looks, smells, well, it doesn't matter. I don't want anything to do with it. But it's one thing to have favor with your friends. It's another thing to have supernatural favor. And so to tell our story, there are certain things that we have to to start. Some of us got to start praying. We got to start reading God's word. We got to start being faithful to church, disciplines in our life. We got to stop. We got to start being more positive and we got to start being more proactive and not just sitting around waiting. We've got to do certain things so that God can bless us. Amen. So we started last week talking about things that we need to start. Today we're going to talk about things that we need to stop. Oh, I'm going to love this one. This one's going to be fun. In order for us to tell a story, not just any story, but a story that God would be happy to tell, there are certain things in our life that we need to stop. And Everybody say amen. There are certain things that you and I today, before you leave this service today, you need to make up your mind and make a commitment to God to say, you know what, today, make up my mind to stop doing this or this. Or you might have a list. But here's what we're going to focus today. I just need one thing. One thing. I don't want you writing down ten things because you won't quit all ten. You'll try to quit all ten, and then you'll just quit. And you won't do any of them. Growing up in the ministry, and especially spending ten years in youth ministry, it never failed. I would have a student get saved, and they would come in, and they would get saved, and immediately they would go home, and they would throw away. This was back when we had CDs and cassette tapes and stuff, all right? It's not all digital like it is now, all right? So how many of y'all remember those days? There's a few of us in here. Thank you, Jesus. So did anybody, y'all remember making the mixtapes? Back in the day when you made a mixtape, that took a lot of time. And, and even before then, when you recorded it on the radio and you had the dub, if you had the two cassette tapes and you could roll it, how many of you ever did that? And you make somebody a mixtape, that means I don't just love you, I, I love you. I mean, it's, it took some time and effort. I mean, that, you had a mixtape, man, that was, that was hot. That was good. So, back on subject here, we would always have students come down, and they would come down and get saved and go to youth camp or whatever, come to a service, and God changed their life, and oh, I'm getting rid of everything. They would go home, and they'd tear down all their rock and roll posters and all their 
everything. They throw away every CD, every cassette tape. They throw it all away. They burn it. You know, they everything. They're getting rid of everything. They broke up with their girlfriend, their boyfriend, all three of their girlfriends. I mean, all of them. It was done. No more. All this stuff. And they just wanted to do all of it at once. Complete remodel. Well, guess what happened? After about two or three days, hey man, can you uh, can you can you make me another copy of that 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 CD or can you can you burn this for me? And all they slowly start to gather all that stuff back. Nothing wrong with with throwing it all away, but when you try to change everything at once, you become overwhelmed, and then you get this feeling like, well, I I can't do it. It's it's no different than I've I've had people that 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 come in and they want to stop they want to stop smoking cigarettes and I've been talking to a few guys in here that have been smoking and I where's Daniel at I yelled at Daniel this morning I said hey I thought you told me you're gonna quit I'm trying I said don't look like you're trying you're smoking one <laughs> I can do that to him I love him I'm not preaching against smoking cigarettes I'm preaching against habits there are certain things that would be beneficial to us to stop. No different, him smoking that cigarette and him yelling at me in the McDonald's line saying, get that big double cheeseburger out of your mouth, fat boy. I mean, that's a habit. My truck just naturally goes into McDonald's drive-thru. Be talking on the phone and I stop talking. I'm in, I'm in, I'm like, how'd I get here? What's going on? It's just a natural process. There's certain habits in our life, certain things that we get. It's just, it, we need to stop. Why do we need to stop? Because it hinders us from being able to live a life and tell a story that God wants to tell. More importantly, what the question today is, what does God want you to want? Not what does Justin Harris want to want, and how what will be better for me, but what is God wanting me to want? And that goes back to what we were singing about earlier about being close to Him and the desires and, and how we take on His nature. Because honestly, this morning, church, some of you, you're frustrated because you don't know what God wants you to do in your life, but you don't go to church, you don't pray, and you don't read God's Word. It's hard for you to understand. It's hard for Him to get close to you. Amen? It'd be hard for him to, to direct your life if you're not close to him. It'd be hard for you to recognize his voice if, if you don't ever spend time communicating with him. If you're never around his presence. Have you ever walked in or maybe you walked in this morning and you just felt something different? You, you just felt through this, the worship that's just like, okay, I don't understand it, but I, I think God's here. I think you feel his presence. And sometimes we can get in a habit of not being faithful to church to where we get to where we don't even recognize his presence. God's wanting us to stop certain things. I want to read right here in uh, Exodus. i got to hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. In Exodus chapter 18, we find here the story of Moses and I want to read this to you, and it's, it's something that really helped Moses. He had to put some guidelines up, and he had to stop doing certain things so that he could be more productive uh, to the children of Israel. So we find here in verse 13, The next day Moses took his seat to serve as a judge for the people. They stood around him from morning till evening. When his father-in-law saw, saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, What is this you're doing for the people? Why do you alone set as judge while all these people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and laws. Verse 17, Moses' father-in-law replied, what you are doing is no good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me. I will give you some advice, and may God be with you. You must be the, God's, you must be the people's representative before God, 